Thank you, uh, Minister. And I do have a few questions for you on this. Um, enforcement, I think, is hugely important. And I think the WRC rearrangement is, um, is going to be beneficial um, in, in the long term. It will probably take a while to bed down, but I think it is going to be beneficial, particularly because if one has to apply for a, um, a retribution in terms of employment law not being um, applied fairly, up to now, you could be waiting four or five years for to have an unfair dismissal case heard, and this will hopefully end, and workers will have their cases heard within a reasonable and livable width amount of time. Um, but on the question of um, in, in regulation, I just note here that uh, the number of health inspections that took place by the HSA has increased quite significantly. I remember Joe Higgins once famously said, there were more um, dog license inspectors in the country than there were workplace inspectors, and that has thankfully changed, and that there have been quite a rise in the number of workplace inspections by the Health and Safety Authority. I just would like to ask the Minister, is she satisfied with that level of um, inspection? Uh, is she satisfied that we have enough inspectors? And given that there have been a number, at least one fatal accident in the construction industry recently, does she think that we might need to up the level of inspections, particularly in construction? Uh, that's one question for you. The other is I'm concerned about, as I'm sure the Clearies workers are, the time frame for legislation and the outcome of the investigation into what happened in Clearies. Because it doesn't be missed on workers that heaven and earth is moved very quickly when an issue like the Apple tax happens, but it seems to drag on when it comes to the question of retribution and equality and justice for workers. And lastly, um, of course, I do want to talk about the Local Pay Commission. When it was announced that there was an extra 10 cent an hour on the minimum wage, I felt personally responsible and embarrassed about it because it dawned on me, I'm on that committee. In the name of God, what are they thinking of giving 10 cents an hour to workers? Uh, when even your own programme for government has promised and has a commitment to bringing the minimum wage up to 10.50 within the programme's uh, lifetime. Now, if you're going to do it at this pace, it'll be 2028 before you get to 10.50 an hour. So I just think it is an appalling outcome uh, from the Low Pay Commission to say to so many workers throughout the country, 10 cents. You may as well have given them nothing. It's entirely insulting. And you said earlier on, in the, when we were looking at the, 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 the previous section A, that um, you're very determined to promote um, foreign direct investment, these are all good jobs, they pay very well, that getting people back to work is your priority, you're particularly concerned about women and young people, um, and you think that having a job must be a pleasure and is a boost to your morale. This is a kick in the teeth to people's morale, 10 cents an hour on the minimum wage, which is already at, at a very low level of 9.15. And you must take into consideration when you look at this, that everything, everything from rent to mortgages to insurance costs to the price of medication has gone up in this country and gone up quite seriously, not at the rate of uh, the cost of living index, but much, much more seriously. Insurance, for example, 40, 50 percent. Um, rents up the latest report from DAF, 12% in, in areas like Dublin and Cork. So how do you explain offering low, low paid workers 10 cents an hour? There isn't a single one of us in this house that is working for that kind of money, nor would we. Point so I would made. like that explained. And just to finish my point, could the Minister comment on the minority statements uh, to the Low Pay Commission? For example, Edel McGinley, when she shows the statistics that most low paid people are in the hospitality, food, retail industry, where the profits have actually uh, spiked past what they were uh, pre the crash in the last couple of years. How do we explain that you then offer the workers in these industries, most of whom are women and young people, uh, an insulting 10 cents an hour? Deputy, that's something we might look at in the committee ourselves um, next. When, when well, we it's, part work out. This, it's part of this yeah. section. Okay, Somewhere Minister. Okay, thank you. If you don't mind, I'll, I'll deal with national, the national minimum wage, uh, if you don't mind, at the beginning. Firstly, any decision made on the national minimum wage will be a collective government decision, considered in the context of the budget. The Low Pay Commission is independent. It was set up in the, uh, by uh, Jed Nash 
uh, Deputy Jed Nash in 2015. It is independent and it examined all issues before making the recommendation. I know you are right, um, Deputy Smith, it was a split decision. Data. Not being funny, but did you say independent or independent? E sorry, independent. Independent. I beg independent. I N D E P. Okay. Yeah, grand. Uh, data on the impact of the last rise in the national minimum wage to, 19, to €9.15 Euro 15 has not yet become available. The national minimum wage affects many small Irish businesses in the retail, hospitality and food sector who often operate in rural areas and where their profit margins can be very low. These were the aspects that were taken into consideration. The Low Pay Commission looked at the impact of a rise in the, in the national minimum wage on border areas where the recovery has been slow to reach. Sterling exchange rates may have had a particular impact, may have a particular impact in these areas. It also gauged the impact of Brexit on sector, sec, certain sectors like retail and hospitality. It is right that the setting of the national minimum wage is a discussion that absolutely divides opinion, and I understand that. Any, opinion, any inquiry, I would like actually if we could have given 10 euro, 20 euro, but however, that is not what happened. It was what they, when they were taking, um, when they were deciding on the when they were deciding on the national minimum wage. Um, it was about achieving the right balance for the circumstances. It is important to make the right decision for the country. As a government, we have stated that we are supportive of increasing the national minimum wage to 10.50 by 2021. But the programme for government states clearly that the government will rely on the annual recommendations of the Low Pay Commission on the level of adjustment each year. However, we now have to decide if we accept the expert recommendation of the LPC made based on their analysis, their public consultation and meetings with all interests. The Low Pay Commission has stated that incremental increases in the national minimum wage do not harm growth. A sudden sharp increase may harm growth and employment levels. Thank you, Minister. So it was an independent decision. Oh, I really? Oh, really? Yeah, we'll see how it ends yeah. up. Okay, yes, uh, Deputy Quinlivan. 